In this lecture, we're going to discuss the derivative of exponential and logarithmic functions, but we're actually going to discuss just a very special type of exponential and logarithmic function, and that is with base e. So the two functions we're going to look at is f of x is equal to e to the x, and f of x is equal to ln of x. And just as a reminder from algebra, ln of x is the same as log base e of x. So e to the x is the exponential function of base e, and ln of x is the logarithmic function of base e. So we have three new derivatives here. The first one, which tends to be some people's favorite, it's really easy to remember, it's nice, it's that the derivative of the exponential function e to the x is actually e to the x. So the derivative is the same as the original function. So that's this little guy right here. The second one is actually a build up from that, and that's the derivative of e to the cx. So c here, it stands for constant. So think e to the 5x, e to the 10x. It can also be negative. So e to the negative 3x, right? So it's just a, a number here. It can also be a fraction, any real number. And the derivative of that is that you bring down the c, so you bring down the number part, and then you keep the rest the same, e to the cx. This is actually a... Um, derivative rule called the chain rule and we'll see that in more detail later as of right now you don't need to know the chain rule you just need to know this derivative here that if you have e to cx you bring down c you keep the rest the same and then the third one is the derivative of the logarithmic function of base e ln of x and the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x now as you see in the front there it says x has to be greater than zero because that's the domain of ln the ln of zero is undefined and the ln of any negative number is undefined. So as long as x is greater than zero, you can take the derivative of ln of x and it becomes one over x. So there is no more ln when you take the derivative of ln of x. Now we want to remember the derivatives we have previously already learned. So let's write those because we're also going to be using them, right? So we're building on the derivatives we know. So the first one is that the derivative of a constant, the derivative of any number is zero. Then we have the derivative of a line. The derivative of a number times x is the number in front of x. And we kind of know this even from before calculus, right? Because mx plus b, the slope was m, the number in front of x. And what is the derivative? The derivative is the slope. And then the last one, which is kind of the more one that requires more work, is the power derivative, the power rule. And that's you bring down n and you subtract 1. Okay? So the constant rule, we can call the other one the line rule, and then the power rule. It's important to know them by name, okay? So let's take a look at a few derivatives here. Let's put this to work. So we have our old three derivatives and we have our three new derivatives. So we're going to put all six of those and find the derivatives of these functions. So the first one here, we have y is equal to 6e to the x plus e to the 4x minus 14x squared plus 5 over x. Now, the way that you begin any derivative is to always ask yourself, does this function require me to use any algebra before I can use any of my rules? And there is one term here that does require that. And the term that requires that is this term at the end. Because I don't, I need the x, I can't have the x in the denominator. So I'm going to have to bring that x up to be with the 5. All the other terms are going to stay the same. So the first term stays the same. The second term stays the same. The third term stays the same. But the fourth term becomes x to the negative 1. And now you can begin your derivative. I would highly, highly, highly advise that you do this before any derivative so you get in the habit to really learn to separate. And right when I do my algebra, I'm using y because I'm not taking the derivative yet. I'm just manipulating some of my terms algebraically. Now I can start using all of my little derivative rules here. And what I'm going to do, because I can already see that I'm going to need a little bit more space, I'm going to bring this little guy right here. 
Okay, so now that I begin my derivative, I turn to my derivative notation, which is y prime in this case, and I start to take the derivative. Okay, so the first term is 6e to the x, but we just learned as one of our new derivatives that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, and 6 is just a coefficient in the front, so it stays the same. Plus, e to the 4x is our second new derivative. That's e to the cx. And how do we take the derivative of that? We take the number in front of x, which is 4, and we bring it to the front. And everything else stays the same. So e to the 4x is still there. It's just that the number that right in front of x came down. Minus 14x squared is one of our old derivatives. We bring down the 2, multiply it to 14, subtract 1 from the power, so it becomes 1. And the last term is also our power rule, our old derivative. We bring down negative 5. I'm sorry, we bring down negative 1 to make it a negative 5. And this becomes a negative 2. Now, the only thing we would have to do here is we need to rewrite this. We don't want the term to be negative. So I'm going to rewrite everything one more time. Make it really nice. 6e to the x plus 4e to the 4x minus 28x minus 5 over x squared. And here is my derivative. Okay, let's do the same. So I am going to do algebra here to begin. I look, my first term. Okay, my first term is looking a little weird. And we're going to talk about that because this would probably be something new. But it doesn't require algebra. And my second term also does not require algebra because it's e to the cx, and I can just take the derivative of it in that form. So there's no algebra needed. So I can go directly to the derivative. But I'm writing it just to get in the habit to start to think about it, to think, okay, I need to always look, do I need to do something algebraic before I can start my derivative? So it's just like you're creating a habit. So we have y prime. Okay, so what's going on there? What does x e to the minus 1 mean? So remember that e is approximately 2.7. So if you have x being raised to e minus 1, this little guy right here, that's just a number. All right, it's going to be a decimal number, but it's just a number. So really what you're working with is x to the n right? x to a number. Normally, we're used to something like right above, like negative 14x squared. We're used to something more pretty. We're used to like a number, a whole number or a fraction. But here, it's just going to be e minus 1, but it's a number. So you're still going to use the power rule. You're still going to use this little guy right here. So how does it work? Let's go back. So how it works is, remember, we bring down n in the front. So we bring down e minus 1. We want to use parentheses around it because it's being multiplied to the negative 7, x. And then what do we do to the power? We subtract 1. So we have e minus 1 minus 1. Plus, now this is one of our new derivatives, e to the cx. Remember, how does it work? The 3 is this c. We bring down the 3 only. So multiply with the 2, which becomes 6 and everything else stays the same. A common mistake here, I would say, is people want to do 3x minus 1 because they're used to subtracting 1 from the power. But you really just need to remember that e to the cx, you don't subtract 1 from the power. You just bring down the c. So we can just clean this up a little bit. I will leave this in parentheses. You could distribute the negative 7, but you would have to keep it in parentheses. And then this will turn to e minus 2 because you can combine the negative 1 and negative 1. And then this would stay the same. So all I did here was just uh, combine the e minus 1 minus 1 to e minus 2. Here's my derivative. Let's do another one. More practice better. Okay, let's begin. Algebra. Okay, 13x cubed doesn't need any algebra. It's ready to be derived. The second term does need algebra because I can't take the derivative of the square root of x in radical form. I'm going to have to change it to fraction form. And the last term is going to be ready to go. It's ln of x. So because I'm doing algebra, I still keep it as f of x. My first term stays the same. My middle term, I need to change the square root of x to a fraction power, which is 1 half. And then the last term stays the same. 
Okay, now I can start my derivative. I can now use my derivative notation, f prime of x. The first one term, easy power rule. We bring down the 3, it becomes a 39. We subtract 1 from the power. Second term, power rule, a little bit more complicated because it's fractions, but it's okay. We bring down the 1 half, which becomes 5 halves. And then for the power, we do 1 half minus 1, which becomes negative 1 half. And then the last term, this is a new one. We need to take the derivative of ln of x. Well, it's okay if you didn't remember it yet. It's, one of, it's our third new one. The derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. So now we just need to clean this up, rewrite it. We don't want negative powers or fraction powers. The first term is nice and pretty. We don't need to do anything with it. The second term, I'm going to bring the one, negative 1 half to be with the 2 to make it positive, And I'm going to put it back into a square root. And then here, I'm just going to write it as 50 over x. This would be the most simplified written way of writing this. And here it is. Perfect. Let's do another one. Okay, so this one here is, let's write algebra. Is going to require a little bit of algebra that we are going to write the rules here, the ln rules. So I'm actually going to come over here where I have a little bit more space on this side right here. And I'm going to write logarithmic property. And this is something you're going to be using not only for these derivatives, but also later. So it's going to be something that you really want to, if you don't, you didn't remember these properties, you want to really try to review them over and over again, because they're going to follow you into um, the following derivatives as we move on. So logarithmic property one. If you have a logarithmic, which I'm going to use ln base e, because this is what we're taking the derivative of and you have two terms being multiplied together inside the ln. You can actually expand this into two separate lns and add them together. So ln of a plus ln of b. The second property, which is called the quotient property, is if your terms are being divided, you can expand the logarithmic, and it's ln of a minus ln of b. And the last one is called the power property, and that's if a is raised to a power of p, and you bring down the p to the front. Okay, so let's see. So these are algebraic properties. They are not derivative. This is algebra here. So let's see which terms we're going to use algebra. Remember that the only derivative you know with ln is ln of x. If you don't have ln with x by itself, you're going to have to use algebra. That's really where your mind wants to go. So I can immediately see that I'm going to have to do algebra to here because it's not ln of x, it's ln of x cubed. I don't need to do any derivative to the, uh, I'm sorry, algebra to the middle term, but I'm going to have to do algebra to this because the x is not by itself, it's ln of 3 times x. So g of x equals, how are we going to use algebra on the first one? We're going to use the power property, the last one where the, the argument is being raised to a power p. And the way that we use the algebra is we bring 3 to the front, 3 ln of x. The other term does not, the middle term does not need algebra. And the last term, we're going to use the first one, the product property, because 3 and x are being multiplied together. So we're going to expand it by plussing them. So this is going to be plus ln of 3 plus ln of x. Now I can do my derivative. So now I can use my derivative notation. Always label your derivatives, they are functions. So the derivative of ln of x is one over x. So I can just write this as three over x minus. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x, one of the easiest ones. So this doesn't change at all. Now, this could be a little tricky, ln of 3. What is the ln of 3, right? We know the derivative of x, ln of x. But what about ln of 3? So if you want to think about it, right, remember that ln is a function. It's an operation. Like, think like a square root. So like square root of 3. Well, what is the square root of 3? The square root of 3 is just a number. It's a decimal. 
And this is exactly what ln of 3 is. ln of 3 is a number. You could actually check it out in your calculator. If you were to put ln of 3 into your calculator, you would get that it's approximately 1.1. 1 .1. And what is the derivative of any number? The derivative of any number is 0. Plus, and the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. So these little guys right here are actually like terms. I could have actually added them already here if I had wanted to. So I have simplified g prime of x, 4 over x, minus 5e to the x. And here's my simplified version of my answer. All right, let's do, I believe, only one more. Yes, sad. Okay, so very common type of question. Find the equation of the tangent line. We will see this over and over and over again. And these questions, if you're a procedural type of person, they always require three steps, okay? Step one is to find the derivative. Step two is to use the derivative. So the whole purpose of finding the derivative is to find the slope of the tangent line. And we do that by using the derivative and the x that's given to us. So in this case, it tells us that x is 0, but it will always give you the x. So you will find the derivative at whatever x is given to you. In this case, it will be 0. And the last one part is the algebra part, which is to create an equation of a line. And we do this by doing y minus y1 is equal to m x minus x1, where x1 is the x given to you. So this x1 is the x given to you. Okay, let's do it by steps. I will label them. Number one, let's find the derivative f prime of x. So we have e to the 3x, that's one of our new derivatives, e to the cx. The way we take that is we bring the 3 in the front and we don't change anything else. And the derivative of 1 is 0, so that goes away. So here's my derivative, done. 2, the slope of the tangent line, which is the derivative, really, really important, right, is f prime, plug in 0, because that's the x that it gives us. So there's 3e to the 0. A number, a base to any to 0, is any base to 0 is always 1. So this is 3 times 1, which is 3. And if you were unsure of yourself, you could put it in the calculator and it would give you the same answer. So here's our slope, 3. So we know that m is 3. We know that x1 is 0. But how do we find y1? Well, anytime you want to find y's, you always use the original, right? The original function gives you the points. So that means that we're going to plug in 0, our x, into our original function. That's going to be e to the 0 plus 1, but e to the 0 is 1, so 1 plus 1 equals 2. So this is 2. And now we can use our y minus y1. So we have y minus 2 is equal to 3x minus 0. y minus 2 is equal to 3x. We're going to put our final answer in slope and the sub form, so we bring the 2 over and we get 3x plus 2. And here's our final answer. So we, here we had some derivatives alone, and then we had kind of a one application problem of how we could use the derivative. So again, the key here, right, is really think about your algebra and your derivative. And then now you have your logarithmic properties, which are algebra. This is algebra right here. And then you have your derivatives up here. This is what, how you differentiate your function.